what is your Zoom personal meeting room ID and how should you use it? We're going to find out. And at the end, I'm going to show you how and why we use a page like this to welcome all of our meeting attendees. Whether you're on a free plan or a paid plan, every Zoom account gets a personal meeting room with a fixed ID called a PMI. This means that rather than have an automatically generated ID every time you want to start or schedule a meeting, you've got a consistent meeting address to send people to. Now that's got some pros and cons as we'll discuss, but let me show you how to find yours first. And there's two ways of getting this. First, you can log in from Zoom's website, zoom.us, click my account. You're coming to this screen here, click meetings and personal room. Right there in front of you, this meeting ID and the invite link will lead straight to your personal room. I can click start at the bottom of this window and I'll be prompted to open up the Zoom app. And I've started my meeting. Now I would typically start from clicking the app and opening it up this way. And uh, here I come and with one click, I can start my meeting. That's way quicker than going to the website and launching it that way. And we're gonna have a look at these drop down options under here. There's a couple of default settings just saying that when I start it, the video will be on and that I'm using my personal ID. But this third one down here is my personal ID and it brings up three more options. I can copy the ID. So somebody who's in Zoom and wanting to link to a meeting will click that. Uh, I can copy the invitation from here and that will be something I can send out to my customer. And thirdly, we've got some settings in here. So I reckon that's the quickest, easiest way to share this link, open this up and um, copy the invitation from here. If you're already in a meeting like this and somebody's saying they can't find the link or you want a quick way to be able to find it to share it, the little green shield up here, you can click on that and copy link there. That will again take that invite and you can share that out with somebody. This number or link will never change unless you choose to do so. So that means we can share it with our customers for a one-off or repeated meetings. And I'm going to show you at the end how we create a nice URL rather than that ugly Zoom link. Now, you do have some settings for your personal meeting room. You might have just spotted that. That was our third option down here. Let's click on this and open it. So if I did want to change this number around, maybe uh, we shared it on this Zoom call and suddenly we were getting a whole load of people turning up. Well, we could change that number around if we wanted to. If you've been spammed or you had some issues, but other than that, I would stay with it. If you're going to share this around as a regular link with people, you're going to have to go back and change all those links if you've changed this meeting ID. We do have an option here to put a passcode in. So. Uh, Everyone who joins will need to enter that passcode. I don't personally turn this on because when I share the link, if I've got a passcode, I will share it with the passcode included. So if we were going to get hacked and people find it, they're going to have that anyway. What I think is way more important is having this waiting room turned on. This means, for example, if I have back to back meetings and I run over a little late on the first one or the second one shows up early, then they can sit and wait knowing that I've spotted them and they're waiting for me to invite them in. Once I was in a meeting and I had my next customer just appeared in the call with us. Never again. That was proper awkward. <laughs> Always turn on waiting rooms and that won't happen. And we do have another video dedicated to waiting rooms that you can find in our playlist. I don't worry about the authenticated users. I turn on video for host and participants. The telephone, I use this default option. And then under advanced, we have a few more options in here. Uh, one that I would recommend or certainly suggest is to be able to mute participants on entry and automatically record meeting. And you can do that locally, or if you're on a paid plan, you can do that into the cloud instead. Just be sure to save anything that you're doing on here. Okay, so that's your meeting room and your ID. If you wanna schedule a meeting rather than just start one as we've done here, then you get the option to default to your meeting ID all the time. When we click on schedule down here, Notice I got the option down here for my meeting ID, generate automatically or use my personal ID. And then all of those other features that we put in there into our meeting, we'll be able to bring into this as well. So hopefully you understand what this is now, but should you be using it all the time? I don't think so personally. I use mine for personal one-to-one -one calls that might be discovery calls, it might be paid support calls, and having that set address, it means that I can have it included in automated emails for customers who can book those calls with me. 
but for my group calls, I set up separate recurring meetings with their own fixed IDs and their own preferences. So that one definitely has people muted. It definitely starts recording automatically to the cloud, things like that. And it also allows me to change the name of those meetings. Now, if I'm hosting a one-off meeting in a webinar style, a presentation, then I let Zoom automatically generate a unique ID and address. Okay. Is that all good? Did I miss anything? If so, uh, please let me know in the comments and maybe we can add a video just for you. Now, I said I'd give you a bit of a pro tip and show you how I send customers to a unique link. Through my website, I've built a page out and I can put a unique address to it. My domain is adriansalisbury.com and I add forward slash meeting, for example. I'm not going to tell you what it actually is because I don't want everyone going there. So that's this web page that we've created and I can just send customers to it and say, hey, if you want to come on a meeting with me, head over here. They come to this page. You're about to join Adrian Salisbury on a support call and they can click join here. And all that's doing is my Zoom meeting link brings them over to here. They would then open up Zoom and uh, in they come into my meeting where I'll be waiting for them. Or if I'm not there waiting for them, they'll be in that waiting room. I get a lot of feedback on what a nice professional touch that adds. And it means that it's easy for me to remember that link and share it with people. Come on, that was worth staying to the end for, wasn't it? Well, if you enjoyed this, please do give us a thumbs up and be sure to check out the other videos in our Zoom tips and tricks playlist over here. I'll see you in one of those videos.